It's my great pleasure to be here and present our work about how much can data compressibility help to improve non-flash memory lifetime. Uh, we know that is a very hot topic today uh, about how to design the integrate non-flash memory into the computing systems. And it's being highly pursued by the industry. And uh, this ground of industry trend is uh, essentially enabled by the continuously bit cost reduction thanks to the very aggressive uh, technology scaling down. And meanwhile, uh, we know that the side effect of the, uh, of the very beautiful technology scaling down is the uh, degradation of memory cell reliability. And it caused the lifetime of net flash memory is very limited. And uh, in device level, the limited net flash, uh, net flash memory lifetime is because of the damage uh, introduced by the data program and the data eraser process. We know that the basic net flash memory cell is a, a floating gate transistor, and the data storage is realized uh, by the modulating the transistor's threshold voltage uh, through controlling the, non the, uh, the amount of the electrons trapped into the floating gate layer. And the repeatedly program and erase cycling causes more and more uh, charge trap into the silicon uh, oxide of the memory cell. And that charge trap is the damage of the memory cell uh, because those charge, uh, those charge traps can randomly capture or emit electrons. And this random electrons capture or emission will introduce the threshold voltage fluctuation or more uh, even the threshold voltage um, be moved from the predefined positions and result in the data error when we reading the data by sensing the threshold voltage position. <clears throat> and to handle such damage caused by the limited uh, memory life, uh, the log structure file system or some efficient trans uh, flash translation layer uh, functions can be used to uh, reduce the damage from garbage collection or uh, frequently how data updated. Or, uh, and the error correction coding is another very helpful method to increase the error tolerance capability of non flash memory to endure more program and uh, uh, erase cycles. Besides, uh, because in sense the damage comes from the data store, so the damage itself could be ma uh, manipulated to reduce the damage. And uh, uh, data compression um, is, the mo uh, 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 is the most straightforward and uh, uh, conventional idea for the data manipulation. The number of data can be reduced by the compression. And uh, therefore, the storage space, the some storage space can be saved from be programmed and uh, or erased, so that uh, for this saved space, there is no damage introduced, and the overall damage uh, of the memory uh, the, the memory device uh, will be reduced, and uh, the lifetime improvement can be achieved. Uh, that is a very common sense, but the question is. What is the quantitative re uh, relationship between the data compression, uh, data compressibility, and the lifetime improvement? One may uh, simply expect that uh, storing data with an average, uh, average compression ratio alpha can uh, directly reduce the damage uh, with a factor of alpha, and uh, lifetime improvement can be uh, achieved by the factor of one over alpha, but it's not always be true when uh, considering some practical facts. So first uh, is uh, an user space in one flash page. And the flash page stores the data sector from the host. Uh, one flash memory page can store one or more data sectors without compression. And regardless the compression or uncompression, each data sector must inside entirely in one flash memory page to avoid uh, random read latency. And in this way, um, if the uh, space of flash memory page 
cannot fit for a new compressed data sector, and this new compressed data sector should be stored in another flash memory page. And therefore, there must be some unused flash memory page uh, in practical data, uh, data compression storage. And uh, unfortunately, the unused uh, space um, is different from the saved memory storage uh, space talked previously, because although we can avoid, uh, uh, well, uh, we can um, make this unused space avoid from be programmed, but we cannot avoid this unused space be erased. And uh, we know that the damage from the data program and uh, erase is dominated by the erase process because the longer and the higher voltage stress. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, as a result, this unused space is counted by the data compression ratio, but it still introduces, sorry, but it still uh, introduces damage to the memory cell. So we cannot uh, simply equal the data compression ratio mean with uh, damage reduction or le uh, lifetime improvement of flash memory. And another fact is uh, uh, compression ratio variance or deviation. Uh, for the runtime data compression, one data sector maybe has a, a very good compression ratio or bad compression ratio. And that compression ratio uh, deviation will complicate the data storage when using MLC or TLC non-flash memory. Uh, for example, in MLC non-flash memory, one memory cell uh, stores two digital bits, and uh, one bit belongs to the lower page, and the other bit belongs to the upper page. And the uh, memory cells belong to the same page connected by a single VLAN. So in one MLC uh, non-flash VLAN, there is one lower page and one upper page. Uh, because, uh, because of the deviation of compression ratio, the compressed data length is always different between the lower page and upper page in one world. As a result, the data layout will be divided uh, one flash world into three types of region. Uh, in each type one region memory cell, uh, both of the bits belong to the compressed bit. And in each type two region memory cell, one belongs to the compressed data, and uh, the other bit belongs to the unused space. And in each type three region memory cell, both of the bits belong to the unused space. And uh, so the question is, if the goal uh, is to minimize the damage uh, for data compression storage, um, how to take this unused space? Is that enough to just leave this unused space be un unprogrammable? Uh, to answer this question, a special character of uh, MLC non-flash memory should be considered. <coughs> Although current practice estimates the memory cell damage solely depends upon the number of program and unit cycles endured by memory cell, but actually uh, the physical damage further depends on the uh, data content being programmed to memory cells. This can be uh, intuitively using the red figure. The different data content, or say different patterns, uh, like pattern 11, one, one, pattern 10, zero, pattern 00, zero, and pattern 01, correspond to different number of electrons that pass through the gate oxide, and hence different amount of physical damage. Um, that's a very um, important, uh, uh, important and special character that MLC and flash experience content dependent uh, memory damage. And also, we can expect that the damage introduced by pattern 11 is the smallest, while the uh, data pattern 01 introduced the largest memory damage. And the data pattern 10 introduced smaller damage to uh, flash memory than the data pattern 00. And to further demonstrate such uh, content uh, dependency damage, we carry out uh, experiments using uh, 29, uh, 20 nanometer MLC and flash memory chips. We test the row bit error rates of memory cell for the four uh, data patterns as, a, uh, as well as the random data pattern. Um, it's obviously that to reach the same row bit error rate, 
different data pattern experience quite different program and erase cycle number. And the test results uh, support our conclusion about the content dependency of memory damage in MLC9 flash memory. Um, we should know that if we, uh, um, if the uh, memory chips is changed from another, uh, uh, from different manufacturer or uh, the different memory chip even in the same manufacturer, the exactly curve may be changed because of the uh, various of mem uh, flash memory chips. But the damage relationship between the damage, uh, uh, between the data patterns should keep the same. And also, uh, because the compressed data or uncompressed data are agoric, uh, so we can consider uh, the compressed data and the uncompressed data is the random data when we uh, measure their damage to the memory cell. And uh, for the random data patterns, we found that the damage uh, in uh, introduced from the random data pattern is larger than some kinds of data pattern, such as pattern 1110 and 00. And, and that content dependent damage will uh, inspire us to how to do for the unused uh, space in the data compression storage. Uh, we should assign the bits to the unused flash page space separately in type 2 and uh, type 3 memory cells uh, with a very simple goal, just to increase the number or the percentage uh, for the smaller damage uh, data pattern to the memory, and uh, while decrease the, num the percentage of data pattern with larger uh, damage, like pattern 0 one. And we also should, uh, should do the intra-page while leveling uh, for the compressed data storage by changing the hide point of the program compressed data for each time of program. And because of uh, the, the uh, direction of the compressed data is the same in upper page and the lower page, uh, so we name this data layout as a unidirectional data layout. For the unidirectional data layout, uh, although we employ the content dependency damage character to determine the data content in the unused space, but we found that there was a lot of memory cells uh, in which both of the upper page bit and the lower page bit belong to the compressed data. And we can do nothing for that because they just store the compressed data. But however, the, we, uh, we know the um, damage from the uh, random uh, random data uh, uh, random pattern uh, data pattern is very large than some other uh, data patterns such uh, such as pattern one 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 zero and uh, zero zero, and so that we further uh, present a bidirectional data layout strategy, uh, uh, which is a very simple idea, just to program the data in lower page and upper page in different direction. And by this way, the type one memory cell, which, uh, 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 which belong to the random data pattern can be reduced as much as possible. And in addition, there are two scenarios for the memory cell in type two. And we found that if we conditional exchange for upper page data and the lower page data, which uh, guarantees that the compressed data lens in lower page is always shorter than that in upper page. The damage to the memory, the, the overall damage to the memory will be reduced. Uh, however, because uh, which data should be stored in the lower page and the which uh, data sh uh, should store in the upper page has been determined by the FTL. So if we do this uh, conditional data exchange, we have to modify the, F, uh, the FTL, and so that it, it will introduce some extra overhead to FTL. But however, the really overhead of the data compression storage to FTL or file system is the conventional data compression itself. Uh, we named the con uh, conventional data compression uh, as the exp um, explicit data compression. Because the, the runtime variation of the data compressibility results in a heterogeneous amount of flash memory pages in terms of the number of the data sectors. 
uh, which complicates the FTL and the file system uh, design very much. Uh, for that reason, we present an implicit data compression storage as the complementary for the conventional explicit data compression. And in the explicit, uh, in the implicit data compression storage, the number of compressed data sector in one flash page is the same as the number of data sector in a no data compression scanner reel. And in this way, the data compression storage is totally transparent to the FTL or the file system. And so there is no overhead to the FTL and the file system. But the drawback of the implicit compression is also very uh, ob obviously because there is no saved storage space, but only the unused page space. We will show the damage uh, reduction and the lifetime improvement comparison between the implicit compression and the conventional uh, explicit com compression in later simulation slides. So for now, we have utilized the con content dependency character to reduce the damage of flash memory uh, in the data compression storage. But we need the quantitative relationship between the memory, story, uh, memory damage and uh, memory lifetime. Sorry. Uh, to figure out this problem, we propose a parameter named the damage factor to establish such connection between the uh, damage effect, uh, b between the damage and the me memory lifetime. And using our test results from the 20 nanometers MLC net flash memory, firstly, we set a bit error rate tolerance limitation for the flash memory. If the bit error rate uh, exceeds that uh, tolerance limitation, the flash memory will wear out. Uh, as talked previously, the compressed data and the uncompressed data can be considered as the random data. When reaching the bit error rate uh, limitation, the memory cell lifetime for only storing the random data pattern is uh, 8 R max. But if the memory cells only stores one kind of data pattern, for example, uh, pattern 11, the lifetime is 8 11 max. And we def define the damage factor for each data pattern as a normalized lifetime to random data pattern. The damage factor can be seen as a, a quantitative damage for one time program and erase uh, for a data pattern. For example, according to the definition, the damage factor of a random pattern is one. And that means for one time a random data pattern program and the erase, the introduced quantitative damage is one. And because the lifetime for the random data pattern is 8 R max, we know that the quantitative damage limitation for one memory cell is 8 R max multiple one. And if the memory cells only store the data pattern one one, because the lifetime become to uh, 8 1 1 max, so the damage of one time program and erase uh, for uh, pattern 1 1 should be 8 R max over 8 1 1 max. That is what, uh, what we need that the connection between the damage for one time program and erase cycle and uh, memory lifetime. And if we um, use this damage factor to estimate the lifetime of net flash memory device. It will be more complicated because one MLC net flash VLAN is a combination of many kinds of data patterns. Uh, we built a mathematical model to connect, so to, to really connect the damage factor and the memory device lifetime. Um, the, math, the mathematical model is a little complicated in detail so uh, in abstract, it, the mathematical model requires the input of data compressibility parameters, uh, damage factor of each data pattern for the net flash memory device, and the physical flash memory parameter, such as the number of memory cell in one word line and the, the number of word line in uh, one flash block, and the, opt uh, and the output of the uh, model is the survivability of the flash memory device 
uh, at a given program and erase cycles. And in other words, if we fix the survival probability, the output of the mathematical model is the lifetime of memory device. And we use this model to estimate the memory life in data compression storage with the previously present methods. And we first uh, selected some popular types of data from a data server. We use the very common LD77 as a compression algorithm and set one data sector length at four kilobytes. Uh, that means uh, the uh, compression block length is uh, four kilobytes. And we found that the compression ratio distribution is very similar to the Gaussian distribution. And so in our simulations, we assume the data compression ratio follows the Gaussian distributions. Uh, and this, uh, this slide shows uh, the survival probability from the uh, mathematical model. We use uh, no data, comp uh, the no compression as the baseline scenario and uh, UD means the unidirectional data layout, BD means the bidirectional data layout, UDC means the unidirectional data layout with condi uh, conditional data exchange, and BDC means the uh, bidirectional data layout with conditional data, uh, data exchange. And by uh, comparing the data compressibility in last slides and the results shown in this figure, we can clearly see that the difference between the explicit compression and uh, the implicit compression strongly relies on the data compressibilities. And the higher data compressibilities means the, uh, 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 the larger difference between explicit compression and uh, implicit compressions. In addition, uh, we found that the bidirectional data layout with conditional data exchange storage design always performs the best, uh, uh, can achieve the best lifetime performance and both explicit and uh, implicit data compressions. And we also carry out further simulations uh, by the mathematical model by uh, considering a much wider range of data compressibility in terms of compression ratio mean and the standard deviation. Uh, by citing the storage device lifetime as program and the erase cycles corresponding to the 99.9% of storage device survival probability, this figure plots the storage device lifetime gain over the baseline scenario. And we found that the data with better compressibility uh, means the smaller compression ratio mean lead to the larger lifetime improvement in both explicit compression and uh, implicit compression. And for less compre uh, compressor data, uh, for example, with a compression ratio mean of uh, 0 0.7 and higher, explicit and uh, implicit compression have almost the same effect. This is because with lower uh, data compressibility, explicit compression can hardly increase the number of compressed data sector per page. And this figure shows the impact of the data compression ratio deviations. As the data compression ratio standard deviations increased, advantage of the explicit compression over implicit compression becomes more significant. And the storage device lifetime improved, generally uh, reduced. This result more clearly reveals that the dependency of compression between explicit and implicit uh, comparison, uh, comparison on the compression ratio and the standard deviation. Uh, so for this work, we focus on the employing the data compressibility to reduce the damage in order to improve the net flash memory lifetime. We uh, explore the content dependency MLC net flash characteristic to design several strategy to reduce the memory damage introduced by the program and the erase cycles. And also we introduce the implicit compression method which can remove the extra overhead for FTL or file system uh, by the data compression storage. And also we developed a mathematical model to provide a view for the lifetime improvement of NetFlash memory 
by data compressibility. As long as the data compressibility and uh, the damage character of net flash memory can be obtained, one can use this model to estimate the practical merit of data compression for the flash memory lifetime improvement. So that ends my talk. Thank you. Yeah, this is Nirmal from Samsung. Uh, so your data shows that you're getting about 10, 10 to 20% improvement in program array cycles, 9,000 to 11,000. So, uh, so how does the sensitivity change? Because with wear leveling, the effective program array cycles are kind of improved. So if wear leveling is introduced, does the sensitivity in lifetime remain the same or? Uh, can, you, can you speak up, please? Um, I'm sorry. Uh, w the the data that shows is uh, just with raw compress, the raw PE cycles go from 9,000 to 11,000, 20 percent improvement. But if I factor in wear leveling algorithms, which try to mitigate the effect of uh, erase cycles, do we get similar improvements or any thoughts on that? Uh, so you mean the uh, data uh, compressibility? Uh, actually, this model can uh, support um, one kinds of data type, and uh, uh, we think the uh, in some data set uh, there are maybe includes many data types, and uh, maybe uh, each data type follows one uh, compare ratio uh, di uh, di distributions, and uh, we can estimate each. Sorry. We can estimate each uh, data size, uh, data type to uh, about the merit of uh, compression for the net flash memory left time. Um, uh, if did you consider the case that you actually allow a block to span a compressed block to span two blocks, and then you can actually get the full potential of compression? Uh, would that clearly improve your lifetime of the of the flash? Uh, you mean the variance of the block? No, not the variance. If the block can actually sit on on two blocks, so when you read it, you might have to read two blocks. Okay. Uh, but how will that affect the the lifetime of the flash? Uh, you mean the data is stored in two blocks? And uh, when reading the data, we have to read uh, both of the blocks. Yes. Uh, actually, uh, the compression method in this work, we assume that the data is compressed by the data sectors. Uh, because the file system, the, the logic address of data, uh, the granularity logic address of data is the data sector. And uh, we compress each data sector by itself. And uh, so the uh, the data sector, uh, one data sector is very small, uh, maybe a four kilobytes or, or smaller. So uh, in that case, there, there, uh, there is no happen about the one data sector stored to uh, different uh, flash blocks. So we didn't consider the data stored to different blocks in the scenario. Uh, can we take that off? I'll right. take it off. Maybe our last question. Just was a little question from editor. So, uh, one thing that I I've, I've had bad experiences with compression and uh, SSDs because I was one of the unfortunate unfortunate people who owned the OCZ SSDs that compressed all your data for speed, and then I run encrypted file systems on top of that. So, uh, actually, a vast majority of my data is uncompressible. Um, so, can you comment on what you think is going to be? If this is going to be actually practical, as more and more people are encrypting their disks, I mean, we have heard from many data center-centric companies that they're going to be starting to encrypt as much as possible. There was a research out of MIT many years ago about how you really should encrypt your disk, not because you care about the government, because when you throw your disk out, somebody's going to buy it off eBay and get all your information. So, can you comment on how that would affect your work? Uh, you mean the practical uh, sense of the compression? Yeah, the, the practical side of this versus many people starting to use encrypting file systems. 
uh, uh, so um, actually we think the data compression in the practical use the most challenge is for the complicated the, the file system because if we uh, compress a huge block of data and uh, just to store uh, in one compression block and uh, when you update or you read uh, a, a small portion of this uh, large compressed block you have to decompress the whole block and uh, there is much overhead of the data access speed and uh, the, the bus resource and uh, so uh, uh, in, in this work, we uh, just to compress the data in the granularity of the data sector. And as I talked, it's, so the granularity of compression is very small, and uh, it doesn't. So the overhead for the file system and FTL will be reduced. So uh, during, so the practical use of uh, for that method may be better than the conventional. So a very large block compression usage. Can we take that offline, maybe? For the interest of time. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Um.